Um, we're here today to talk about what makes a successful brand and um, I suppose everyone will have a different opinion on that and we're all going to share our, our thoughts and insights on that. Uh, but really for me, I think branding is really the essence of what makes a good business. Um, what makes a good business is knowing exactly who you are and what you're about and, and really what your promise is and what you're going to take to the market and to your audience. A brand is simply the vehicle that expresses that across a number of different, different touch points. Um, and doing that in a consistent format. Uh, my agency had the, had the privilege of developing the Brand Canberra um, campaign, which many of you would have seen over the last 18 months. And probably the one common thing that we learned early on or that we heard early on is that a brand is about a logo. A brand is so much more than a logo. It's the totality of experiences that you create for your business. It's the way that you, it's the brand personality that you create, it's the values that you create. It's the look and feel, it's the organisational culture that you want to develop. Um, how do you create a, I suppose, a brand strategy? So I'm going to touch on that really quickly. Um, then I'm going to take you into the actual brand camera case study and just show you what we went through in developing that. Now, while that's quite a, a large brand, it's total, totally scalable for any shape or size or for, or for any business. Um, but for me, branding comes down to two simple things. It's really what, are you, what, what you want to say, and it's how you make your customers feel. Um, in terms of developing a brand strategy, and again, you can, you can take this for any business, there's three things that I would really look at. I think the most important thing is having a vision. No matter what size you are, whether you're, you're new, whether you're established, it's about having a, a vision for what you want to be. Now, mind you, your vision might change at some point because when you're very small compared to when you grow, obviously the, the environment changes, but having that core vision, having those boundaries you want to operate in, I think is fundamental um, to your brand. Um, but also perception and research. So as an established brand with Canberra, there was already a defined perception about what Canberra is. In a small business case, you might not have that, but you can certainly conduct research to understand what the market opportunity is, or where the gaps are, or where the unneed customer, um, where the, unne the unmet need is for the customer, and develop your brand around that. I think developing a brand strategy is really built around those three core elements. So I'm going to take you through uh, some of the, I suppose, the thinking and what we went through um, with Brand Canberra. It was a, it's been a pretty difficult challenge. It's been something that I've really enjoyed. Um, you look at Canberra as a city and we've, we've come off the back of our centenary year where Robin Archer, who was really, I suppose, the figurehead for the centenary, was trying to encourage Canberrans and Australians to remix, um, reimagine and re-experience Canberra. So we went through a process where we celebrated the last 100 years and, um, and had one big party, but that didn't necessarily define ourselves as a, as a city. Um, so our role or our goal was to create a city brand which took us forward. What you have to do with branding, I talked about that growth in your business, is branding is about making sense out of your current identity and where you are, but also having a sense of where you want to go or all that vision, so making making that future pathway. So in Canberra sense, we clearly have a story to tell right now, but as we grow as a city, as uh, different infrastructure and projects evolve, as our population grows, we're, we're going to have a different story to tell. I touched on before that a brand is more than a logo. To me, it's a way of thinking. It's, it's your core promise. It, it, you, you look at uh, probably, and this example would get used a lot, but I think of Apple as probably the pioneer in terms of branding. It's a global brand. Um, I very rarely think about their logo when I think of Apple. I think of the way that they, they disrupted an industry. They created modern products um, that were synchronized, that were simple to use, um, that were consistently expressed in every touch point from the way their website looks, to the way the products they make looks and feels, to the in-store experience you get when you go to an Apple store. Um, all of those are, are, are a sense of branding and the way a brand wants to express itself and the promise that it creates. I think probably in talking about perception, and talking about research, and talking about vision, one thing that is true to any brand is it has to be real. So if you believe it, your customers would believe it, and you need to create that perception. But it, you have to believe it for it to be real. And I'll give you an example. When I was uh, 20, I started Coordinate, and it was impossible at 20 years of age to walk into you know, an established business and try and sell my services. It's quite difficult. Um, you're, you're young, you're inexperienced, and you're competing with people that have um, a lot of money and a, and a great reputation. But at that point in time, 
I believed that being young and agile entrepreneurial was actually my brand. And that actually gave me a point of difference and I was able to move quicker than perhaps what the competitors would, would do. And, and in turn, that allowed me to attract like-minded people that also had that mindset. So in believing that, I was able to convince other people uh, of that as well. We talk about, I suppose, why brands are important. Cities are no different to businesses. Our business is all about economic development, all about making money. In Canberra's case, it's consistently competing with other cities around the world, whether it's for investment, whether it's for tourism, whether it's for skilled migration, whether it's for study. Canberra's consistently competing. Now, everyone here today who has a business will also be competing in the marketplace and standing out for, for attention. So a good brand will allow you to compete and to stand out. Um, talk about where brands come from. Again, I think it's really important to understand that trilogy in terms of research, in terms of perception, um, and in terms of vision. A good brand will come from, from those three elements. Now I'm going to talk to you in terms of how we develop Canvas brand and just some simple tactics that you can put in place in your business um, in terms of developing your brand. Um, we looked at all the different connecting forces that make Canberra unique. Now, none of these in, in an individual presence are necessarily unique to Canberra, but when you add them up in totality, they create a really compelling story. So if you have a look at the fact that you know, we've got a, a world-class education system here, we are the seat of federal government, and because we are the seat of federal government, there are things that you can do in Canberra that you can't do anywhere else. Um, Amanda is a great example of selling our food and wine culture in Canberra. We have a thriving hospitality industry that is now rivaling anywhere in the country and we're starting to get really great credibility for that. So when you pull, when you pull apart all those facts and then you put them together and the way that they work together, that gave us a bit of footprint for, for how Canberra is unique. In terms of your own business and how you could apply that in your own business, um, look at the different services that you offer and, and what makes you, you unique from your competitors or other people in the industry. Um, we then went through a process uh, called a values and attributes mapping process. And what we did is we got, uh, there was a number of different people um, that came together in a room and they were asked to put on, on just a, a bit of paper and stick it on the wall, what are the values and attributes of Canvas brand? Now you can definitely apply that in your business. Now whether it's through uh, whether you do it in your, on, on your own, whether you do it with mentors, um, whether you do it with colleagues. It's a really interesting process. What that defined is, again, I talk about research and I talk about um, perception, what, people, what people's perception of Canberra was in terms of its values and attributes as a city. Um, that then gave us an aggregated model um, and we, we took the most consistent answers to determine Canberra's values and attributes. I'm going to click through these fairly quickly, but what came out of that was challenge, free spirit, ideas, quality of life and discovery. Why that's important is that helped us start to get an understanding for the evolution of what this brand would represent. Um, and that of course helped us in terms of taking the expression to market. The same process was used to define, um, define the personality, genuine, influential, thoughtful, contemporary and collaborative. So again, they're high level key words but they were really important in trying to understand the essence of what the brand was about and what it was going to represent. Um, we then positioned them against each other just to see how this would start to evolve. What came about that was essentially a brand essence. Now that is the, really the core thinking of a brand, brand possibilities. Um, in terms of giving you, a, I suppose, a local example, when we started coordinate, we went through a similar process in developing our brand and the personality and the, the attributes and what we wanted our customers to think about us and what I wanted my staff to represent. And while you always don't get it right, you need to have that, that you need to create that perception and that belief internally. So we came up with a tagline of be brilliant. Now that might seem a bit wanky, but what I wanted to aspire to was that I wanted all my staff, no matter what they did, to aspire to that level of brilliance and in turn attract customers that wanted that same level of brilliance. Um, this was a, a really interesting diagram just to show when we pulled, the, I suppose, the personality, the essence, the values together, we developed this brand architecture which, which really summarised the thinking and the essence and the total expression of what we want a brand camera to represent. 
which in turn gave us a vision and a story. Now, storytelling is probably the most important way of expressing a brand. So, in terms of Canberra, the, the first process I'm going to take you through in a minute was to develop the, the logo. As I said, a brand is not just about a logo. I see that as a stamp or as a front door, but it's part of which frames the, the expression. But the story, the singular story that we want to tell the world is that Canberra is ready to embrace the future. We've got a proud history. Um, we've, we've done a lot of great things. You know, you, you only have to look at the momentum we're gaining in Canberra with the hospitality scene or with the discoveries that happen through research and science here to know that we've achieved so much, but now it's ready to look forward. And the role of branding and that vision is to take us somewhere. Um, this is probably a key diagram that we pulled out of the strategy and I think it would be a really simple exercise for you to conduct in your own business. When I talk about, um, when I talk about vision, this is a really good way of trying to articulate your vision. So again, we went through and we tried to understand what people's perception of Canberra was at the time of conducting this and what the, the vision looked like going forward. Really simple, but you can just see that um, we wanted to be a city that evolved from thinking to doing, from theoretical to practical, from protection to potential, from bureaucratic to entrepreneurial, uh, from public to private, follower to leader. So this was a really good, we call it a tone of voice transition, but it's a really good exercise in terms of understanding where your brand or your business sits today and where you want to go in terms of reaching your vision and, and your position in the market. Um, that, of course, informed a lot of the direction in terms of actually formalising the brand and the expression. I've got a question. The uh, dots are uh, positioned relative to how strong the, the way forward is. Is that what like, Yeah, sure. Dots? You obviously yeah. want to be a leader, so you've kind of extremed it on your right hand side, is that right? Absolutely, that yeah. In relation to the other dogs, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Part of branding, again, is the key message is what do you want to tell your audience? What do you want people to know about you? Um, part of the process was just extracting a couple of key messages which really summarised our brand and what we want to say. Canberra is for all Australians. I think that was a, that's a really big challenge that we need to achieve in this brand is that Canberra is consistently bashed outside of Canberra, particularly from the media. So a role of this brand, or the purpose of this brand, is to buy that belief and that input um, that Canberra is such an important place for Australia. It's about connection. Talked about all the different um, values from government to science to research. Um, it's about debate, problem solving ideas, and it's a city and region full of potential. Um, when we got to the end of that, that really defined, I suppose, the strategic thinking and gave us a really good sense of what we wanted this brand to represent. Trying to translate that into to visual is a, is, a, is a pretty difficult challenge. So I'm going to take you through a creative strategy. I'm not going to spend long on it because I know Claire is going to talk about um, visuals. But basically in developing this brand, there were three pillars we looked at. How can you make it different? Because again, we're, we're competing in a crowded marketplace for investment, for study, for tourism. But how can we still make it credible and relevant? And I talked about the fact that brands have to be true, they have to be authentic um, to really resonate. And I look at it in any relationship sense. If you want to have a relationship with, with a friend, you have to be honest, you have to be authentic, you have to be real to connect with them. Well, a brand's no different. Consumers are too smart these days to, to not have that level of authenticity. Um, we went back and we had a look at Canberra's heritage and um, Walter Bella Griffin's sketches in 1913 when Canberra was formed. And, understanding that it was built off geometric shapes and patterns so we could connect some of the, the past into the future. Um, then that was really, the thinking on that was really how the centenary ground was formed as well and that represented a really um, important milestone in the, in the city's history. Then having a look at the fact that we needed that vision. So again, I've gone from perception to vision that Canberra is striving to be an international city. We want to grow and evolve and develop What's the, next what's the next 100 years look like? We're striving to be an international city to rival the best in the world. The best cities in the world have that abbreviation, New York City, Los Angeles. And the abbreviation of CBR isn't foreign. So it's important, again, to be relevant and credible. So CBR was already part of the vernacular that everyday consumers were used to. They see it on their, in social media, on Twitter, Twitter handles. They see it on their, their boarding passes and when they book a flight, and that's what got us to this point here. So you can see there's quite a long journey in terms of developing this brand. 
when we went to market, people were quite critical and said, oh, it's just a logo. But it's so much more than a logo, it's just gonna take time to tell that whole story. Um, but we built the brand off geometric shapes. And again, using some of the key words like contemporary, vibrant, dynamic, when we went to market, we deliberately showed quite a static brand because we wanted to we wanted to get oh, get the, the subjectivity out of the way about whether the brand should be brand um, red, blue, yellow, pink, but knowing that it could come to life. And across, no matter what touch point, the brand had flexibility, it was dynamic, it could change, it could evolve, we could construct that vision. I think it's pretty important um, in terms of setting the message and, and in terms of creating that perception that the brand had that ability to communicate as well. A brand shouldn't just be a symbol or an icon, it needs to actually take you somewhere. Um, so we've developed Canberra as a window into the city or a framework where we can frame key messages, copy, photography. Again, I talk about um, brand positioning, um, about language, how important tone of voice is. Again, this is so much more than, than a logo. But we look at that Canberra was ready to embrace the future. Ready is a really key word that we've used throughout the brand strategy. Um, and we extracted CB or the acronym of CBR and formed confident, bold, and ready. And if we looked at the, I suppose, the tone of voice transition slide about where we are now and how people perceived us now and where we want to go in the future, I think those three words are really um, consistent with where Canberra wants to go as a city. We are confident in terms of the fact that we need to go from bureaucratic to entrepreneurial and follower to leader, and we need to be bold to do that. Um, and Canberra is ready to embrace the future. Um, again, part of branding is what do we tell, what do we want people to know about us and what do we tell them? Canberra consistently, well over the last hundred years, um, has never had the opportunity to express itself as if it was a person. It's always let others define its story and its role. So through this process, we wanted to take back that and that will take time, that won't happen overnight, but what we wanted to do was give Canberra a voice as if it was a person. So extracting all the key words that we got from the research and from the perception mapping and using them to frame key messages. Um, and this just shows in terms of we talk about consistent application, we've now been able to take the brand mark or the identity, we've been able to build the words and the system to form the way that the brand expresses itself to market and do so consistently. Um, and, and using keywords like I'm your history, I'm looking forward, I'm for all Australians, I'm the nation's capital, taking all those key messages and being able to use them in a, in a marketing sense. So these are just a few touch points just to illust illustrate the brand's diversity and flexibility. So, I think just in, in closing, um, I suppose the points that I want to get across is that don't think of a brand as just a logo. When you're going out and starting a business or no matter what stage you're in, you a, a, a brand is so much more. It's the promise that you deliver to your customer and it's the, the mechanisms you use or you choose to use which consistently express that point of difference and that promise. Now not every, we are having a conversation before about Facebook. Not every medium will be right for you. It's about understanding your customers, your audiences, and the, and the best way to reach them, but making sure that you understand the essence and the values of your business, which is translated through your brand and, and taking that to market. Thank you. Thank you.